so exciting to see that Jesus Christ is coming back soon, that he's wrapping up this age, but he's doing it just like he said he would 2,000 years ago. These wonderful words of Jesus, as though he sat back in the days of Jerusalem, and he spoke words out that just literally came flying through time, and they're landing right on the body of Christ today. And Jesus said, this is my plan. I'm the master, and here's my master plan. He said, I want to meet every person on this earth, five billion people. He said, I don't want even one of them to miss me. I want them all to have an opportunity to go to heaven. And so my plan is this, that I'm going to train my believers. I'm going to fill them with the Spirit of God. I'm going to endue them with power. And I'm going to get them where they can go out daily, ministering salvation, casting out devils, ministering the baptism of the Holy Spirit, handling any of the powers of the devil and all of his angels. And they'll go around daily healing the sick. And when the gospel is preached to all the people over all the earth, all five billion of them, by my believers doing signs and wonders, then Jesus said, I'll be back. In fact, if you could just picture Jesus having done his job on earth to give us a prototype of what we're supposed to do, the prototype of the early church with Jesus alone and then a few disciples. And then when Jesus got ready to go up to heaven, he took his life, his character, his nature, his ability, the supernatural, all the things Jesus did on earth, and he picked them up. I'll use the Bible instead of a book. But he said, this is, this is my life. Now, I'm giving all that I am to the body of Christ, to each one of you. You take me, let me live in you, and then you move forth and do the work. You remember Jesus said in communion, he said, uh, take this bread, eat it, it's my body. And that bread of life of Jesus in us will cause us to live and grow and be strong. Then he said, take this wine, this blood, and drink it. And what Jesus really is saying, look, I'm going to plant myself in you. I'm going to plant all that I am in each one of you that are my believers. And when I do that, there is nothing that I, can't, that I can do on earth that you can't do. If God can do it in heaven, if Jesus can do it while he's on earth, then you and I can do the same things. And his plan is that each one of us do it. Can you imagine if... Uh, the angels of heaven rejoice when one person is saved on earth. Think what happens when he gets tens of thousands, then hundreds of thousands, then millions, and then hundreds of millions of his believers out doing everything that he did on earth. Think of the multiplication. Think of the excitement. Think of the souls that will be won by signs and wonders through believers. And then you can get a little bit of the excitement of heaven when all the angels, they don't even get time off for supper. They've got to work night and day just rejoicing because souls are going to be raked into the kingdom of God. And this mighty harvest is coming about on earth today. It's already here. It's already happening. But it's happening through the believers doing what Jesus said. Finally, and this must be the way Jesus said, finally it's happening. Finally what I told him would happen is, and he must be excited because here now, literally hundreds of thousands can go about daily healing the sick just like you've been learning on these, uh, this video teaching. Everybody should do it, and it's so simple. We've written another book. It's a supplement to the uh, How to Heal the Sick. We call it a Handbook for Healing. This book uh, lists some of the newer things that we learned since the other one was written. Uh, we've already taught you some of the things out of this book, uh, but in the back of it, we list diseases. And uh, let me just take, for example, what's in it. it uh, it's from A to Z, and uh, if you want to uh, find out how to, uh, well, let's look over here and find out about, uh, uh, say, cancer. We look under the C's, we look under the CA's, and we find bladder problems, broken bones, cancer. There it is. And over on the left side, it says cancer, a tumor which grows progressively through the body, includes leukemia, lymphoma, and other malignant tumors. And over on the right side, how to minister. And these are suggestions in here of, of how you can minister, but you forget. You forget what certain diseases are that you don't deal with very often. And uh, the first thing to do if you're going to uh, heal cancer, by the power of God, remember, in the name of Jesus. And who gets glorified? Not you when you do the healing. When cancer is rubbed out and when somebody comes alive, it's not you that gets glorified. If you'll do the works of Jesus, then he'll get glorified. And so this is the way uh, he uh, taught us how to really get cancer and all how we've seen cancer heal. 
First thing you do is bind and cast out the spirit of cancer. You remember why we call it cancer? Because cancer, I mean, why we call it a spirit? Because cancer is an incurable disease. And we believe that if, uh, if the doctors can't find the cause or the cure of disease, uh, then it has to be caused by a demon spirit. You cannot fight these principalities and powers, these evil spirits of the darkness, these strong evil spirits. You can't fight them with things of the flesh. So if you can't see them, you don't know what they're doing, then how can you heal cancer? Well, you bind the devil and cast out the spirit of cancer. Then you curse the seed, the root, and the cells of the cancer. Then you lay hands on the affected area, commanding every cancer cell in the body to die. Then you command the bone marrow to produce pure, healthy blood, commanding healing to all organs and tissues affected, and restoration of parts where necessary. Command the body's defective killer cells to multiply and attack all cancer cells. And you'll be amazed at what happens when you specifically drive the power of God into that part of the body. Uh, we had a man the other day that uh, uh, it was a healing explosion in Central America, and we saw them bring him out of the audience. Two men carried him out. He was so weak and so sick that they laid him out on the grass in front of the stadium area. And finally, the healing team started working, and what a glorious sight this must be for Jesus to see hundreds. I think we had 450 on the healing team. And here they walked out, and here they began to perform the miracles. And I looked over in a little while, and there was this man that could not stand. He couldn't walk. Healed by the power of God threw somebody out on the field. It may have been a housewife. It may have been somebody that was unemployed. It may have been a child. No telling what happened. One little boy, so exciting. Uh, uh, he was 13 years old. And it was so casual the way he described it. He said, you know, uh, we got down on our part of the track field. It was a quarter mile track. And the teams were standing there. And people came down to them. And he said, this lady came up. And we said, and what's your problem? And she said, well, one of my eye is nearly blind. And uh, I needed healed. And they said, that's easy, because we teach them all that, and you know that. And so uh, the little guy just touched you on the eye, and he said, and she fell out under the power of God, and we went on down the field to the next one. You'd think, man, a 13-year-old child, people falling under the power of God. When we first came into the spirit-filled world, only one person we ever heard of that had people fall under the power of God. Now they're falling all over the, uh, the racetrack field. So he said, and then we went on down, and we asked this next person, and they had a shoulder out of joint. And so we just commanded it to go back in joint. In Jesus' name, laid hands on them and said, now move your arm. And they began to swing it, totally healed, and said, and then about that time, we heard this woman up there. She was just shouting and everything. And so we ran over to see what happened. She said, my eyes healed my highest healed is perfect and he said and so then we went on to the next person see you should be out daily healing the sick every day you should be ministering healing and that's what's going to change the entire world and that's the way jesus is going to do it we're amazed that many ministries of the earth whether it be individuals or pastors or denominations many of them are trying to set up new programs trying to do all kinds of things to get things to work and good things and proper things but Jesus said, it's going to happen when the believers are out doing the supernatural. I want you to do something for me. Uh, if you are standing on top of a mountain, overlooking a vast city, overlooking the ocean, overlooking the sky, overlooking great dimensions, and you can just see it seems like forever. But then if you put your hand in front of your eyes, about two inches in front, what do you see? You see your hand. So many of us, and friends, and I've been guilty of this just like most of you have. So many of us, we get a project, we get our church, we get our uh, videos, because we get whatever we have, and we get our minds so centered on that that, well, we've got a good view of the program we're doing, and we can see everything about that program, but we can't see what Jesus said to be done. We can't see the kingdom of God. We can't see five billion people needing healing, needing salvation, needing the baptism. We can't see how to make disciples of God. We're too busy doing our thing. But you move that hand out, and you see what Jesus wants. You see the vision of Jesus Christ, and you can tell we're in that day, and it's not going to be long until we look to that eastern sky. And Jesus said, that's it. The last five billionth person uh, received uh, some, uh, some ministry by a believer doing miracles. And when he saw that miracle, uh, this one accepted. This one said, I don't believe it anyway. But yet every person on earth has heard the gospel. And Jesus said, I'm ready to come, folks. I'm ready to come. This is the hour. This is the moment. 
This is the second, this is the microsecond that God set in forth when he created the earth, and that's the second I'm going to be back. But he's going to say, well done, believers. You've finally gotten around to it, and you've healed the sick, you've cast out devils, you've ministered salvation, you've ministered the baptism, you've done the works that I did on earth, and I'm delighted that I can come back to see you. That's the healing power of God today. Let me just share one, uh, one miracle. I love to share miracles for healing, but we can't remember them. If we get to a miracle service, just one evening, maybe in a church, we get back to the hotel and I say, let's, let's jot down some miracles we saw tonight. Do you know that we can rarely remember more than two or three, and yet hundreds of people heal? Uh, and this, this is one that uh, uh, Dr. Harrison Prater, he's a chiropractor from Orlando, Florida, uh, he reluctantly uh, came over to one of our healing explosions to the advanced teaching, and uh, uh, he, was, uh, he was wondering, really, is there something to this? Is there something to this healing? But he began to watch. He began to caught up. He began to caught up in it. And so we brought some people up with some lower back problems, some upper back problems, neck problems on the stage. And uh, Dr. Prater was one of several doctors that got to do it. And uh, and he watched the backs being healed. He checked them before and after the healing. And it literally astounded him that uh, hours and even months of work, sometimes successful, sometimes not, as a doctor. And now he said, in a matter of seconds. You can see the healing power of God. And uh, uh, the other day I was talking to him. He's teaching video healing schools, and he's getting ready to video some more of it, and he's been teaching in several locations. And, uh, and so uh, he's excited about the fact that you can teach people to heal the sick. Well, he said a man came in my office about a week ago and said his knees were so bad that the doctor, that uh, it was his uh, regular doctor, said, I think we're going to have to amputate your legs. We're going to have to cut them off at the knees. And so he was dreading the thought of this. But he came by to see Dr. Prater. He said, well, you know, there's one, one thing that I know to do that can get something that's impossible, and that's to let the power of God go in your legs and heal you. So he set him down, and I don't know what all did. I know he grew out his legs, commanded those knees to be healed, commanded new cartilages or whatever he needed. And, uh, and so uh, greatly relieved of pain right then. And so about a week later, Dr. Prater uh, called this man's home and said, I just called to see how he's doing in his knees. And his wife said, well, I don't know. He's out on the golf course playing 18, 18 holes of golf today, <laughs> healed by the power of God through the hands of a doctor doing the supernatural. It doesn't matter whether you're a little child or whether you're a medical doctor. Uh, it doesn't matter because it's God's power all released, dispensed, if you please, in the name of Jesus so that people will believe in Jesus and he'll be glorified and so that we can reunite this mankind to Almighty God so that we can spend eternity with the Father in heaven, with Jesus, with all the angels, with our brothers and sisters. It's a wonderful thing when you flow in the Spirit. Uh, in our little handbook for healing, uh, it's quite exciting and we're uh, we're working on some things that we wanted to improve on it, but uh, I got a little article the other day. It was, uh, I believe, by a chiropractic uh, situation, but it showed uh, a picture, really, of the uh, of the whole spinal column, and you won't be able to see that particular, but it shows all the vertebrae and disc like you've been taught, and you've seen this in our teaching, and it shows uh, all the different things that each uh, set of nerves go to and then what the different diseases have. And then... Uh, a little article that was written in this article I picked up, and it said in relation to the errors that point to the different parts of the spine, uh, the errors on the left point to the locations in the spine where nerves pass through very small openings on the way to and from the brain to control all the various parts and organs of the body. About 300,000 nerve fibers pass through each of 62 little openings. Just a slight dislocation of a bone vertebrae and the spine can close one of these tiny openings enough to pinch the nerve and interfere with normal passage of nerve impulses. And then it talks about pinched nerves, the great imposter. Did you know that sometimes when you got a pinched nerve, you, got, you think you got something else? Then many times people get a pinched nerve, so it'll make a heart feel like you're having a heart attack. Or maybe you think you got a bladder problem or a kidney problem or something. And it said uh, pinched nerves can mimic every known disease. Pinched nerves can meticulously mock all the symptoms of such disorders as asthma, pleurisy, sinitis, uh, uh, sinusitis, I should say bronchitis, pinched nerves can faithfully copy the discomforts of skin disease, allergies, sore throats, gastritis, 
uh, pinched nerves can exactly duplicate the frightening signs of coronary disease, meningitis, encephalitis, emphysema. Pinched nerves can even fabricate the actual physical changes of ulcers, eczema, bursitis, arthritis. In fact, every disease known to man. Nerves control each and every function of the body, human body. Nerves transmit all sensations to the brain, controls all movements, makes possible sight, smell, taste, and hearing. Nerves maintain your balance and keep your body temperature at 98.6 degrees. Nerves control your blood pressure, stomach action, blood flow, speech, and breathing. Nerves make your bowels move. Nerves can make it pos uh, possible to swallow. In fact, every function taking place in your body is under the control of the nerve system. That's why you'll discover that if you'll start practicing the healings we've taught you on how to grow out legs, how to grow out arms, do the neck thing, the pelvic thing, all of these things that have to do with the spine, with the nervous system, uh, you'll discover the phenomenal percentage of healings you get just in that, both exterior and interior. If you can imagine 85 percent of the world's population uh, have some sort of a back problem, well, you know then that's going to be a lot of healings if you can heal virtually every bad back that you can get a hold of. And I believe every one of you, by doing the things we've taught you, can literally go about daily uh, healing backs in any part of it. It doesn't matter what part. And I believe you're going to see the day that all those paraplegics that have had severed spinal column, I believe you're going to say that, see the day that that'll be just as easy. And then when you consider that probably 70% of all types of diseases have to do with something of the nervous system of the spine, uh, whether it be a gallbladder problem, a nerve problem, a muscle problem, uh, any part of your body, because these nerves are what signal those operational parts of the body to do their function. And so you can actually start off with what might seem like a small percent of healing if you just went around trying to get people out of wheelchairs. Well, it's wonderful to get people out of wheelchairs, uh, but you need to do all the different things that, are, uh, that need to be done. You may have somebody in a wheelchair. Well, for example, I had a paraplegic the other day. He had been in an accident and severed his spine. In fact, I've had several like this, and we've had three or four get up and run. Uh, we've had some of them get up and walk, push their wheelchairs, but those have been rare so far, but they won't be. Jesus healed all of them who came to him. He said, we'll do the same thing and greater things, so get ready. You'll be touching these paraplegics, and they'll jump out of the chair and run right down on Main Street. It's coming, and it's almost here. In fact, by the time you watch this, it may be here. Well, this, uh, this man, I didn't get him out of the wheelchair, uh, but he hadn't had a sign of feelings from his waist down. He couldn't feel anything in his uh, feet and legs. He couldn't move a muscle. He couldn't move a toe. He couldn't move anything. And his feet were just basically locked. So I did the I did the TTT. I did the neck thing, the uh, uh, upper back there, pulling his arms out. He could move his arms normally. I did the pelvic thing, and I took his stiff legs and held them out as much as I could, command that lower back to be healed, the sacrum to go into place, everything to be restored in Jesus' name. And then... I began to do what you've been taught in a stroke situation. I took his legs and uh, began to uh, force his legs to move up and down at the elbow like this. And uh, they began to limber up. And finally, I, I got it started down. I said, now you do it. I said, you push him down. And slowly, 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 it began to take hold. And his eyes began to take hold because he saw and felt something he had never felt since the accident. I said, now pull it back up. Well, he couldn't at first. So I began to help him a little bit, and helping a little bit, and, and he got a little movement, and a little movement, and a little movement, and a little movement, and then back down. And this time, he was able to pull his leg down almost completely by himself, slowly at first, and then back up, just a little movement. And I said, did you notice that when you uh, went down with it, and I said, now pull it back up, did you notice the reverse and the use of your muscles? And he said, yes, I could tell. I've never felt that before. I feel a tingling in my foot. And by the time I got through working with him, he was able to move his foot up and down. He was able to move both legs up and down, both feet. And he saw this something real special. And I believe that if we had time to work with somebody daily like that, that it would be a very short time before they'd be running and leaping and praising God. And that's the way it's going to be, except on those that are the supernatural. You see them just jump and run and play, praise God. The thing that we're excited about that's happening all over the world is we hold a healing explosion going in and under the leadership of the pastor, training the people in their church and their community how to heal the sick, 
then uh, bring them into a healing explosion, give them some live training, uh, teach them, letting them practice each of the things we taught, and then into a healing explosion. Then we send them back to their pastor, back to their church, back to their community, and under the leadership of their pastor and leaders of the church, these people are ready to go ahead and minister in the church, out of church. The excitement of God comes in. The reality that Jesus Christ did not tell a lie. He didn't say something that was impossible. He said, you will go out and heal the sick. And when they start doing this, life comes in them. But the most important thing, and always remember this, Jesus healed the sick so that they would believe in him. And all of a sudden, the compassion of the Lord Jesus Christ rises up in the heart of those who go out and minister healing. And they get them saved and baptized the Spirit, getting everything done that Jesus said would be done. And that's the order of the day. That's the thing. God is moving about the earth, and his glory will be seen over all the earth as the water covered the sea in the days of Noah. Because in the 17th chapter of John, he said, You are my glory. You, not just Charles, not just Francis, not just Jesus, not just Peter and James and John, but you are my glory. He's talking to the ones that believe in him. You are my glory. And when I get to live in and through you, and you go out and do the works that I've done by letting my power, the power of God in my name, go through you to do my work on earth, then I'm glorified. And he said then, and the whole earth is going to be filled with my glory. And you are his glory. Francis, would you like to share with <laughs> Amen. Hallelujah, Charles. And the beautiful thing about it is when he said, you, uh, you are my glory and the whole earth will be filled with the glory of God. Uh, the glory of God is going to be seen when you and I are out actually doing and working the miracles of Jesus. Because we're living in that day when he said the signs and the wonders and the miracles would follow. Uh, I was just thumbing through this book while Charles was talking, and I came across a little statement that we made in the very beginning, talking about the sovereignty of God. Because in spite of all we teach you, we all have to remember that God is sovereign, and God can still do it any way he wants to. But sometimes we can get in false humility, and we say, oh, I could never do anything. No, I could never heal the sick. Well, if you're going to feel that way, you'll never be able to heal the sick. But I want to tell you this. When I lay hands on people, I expect them to be healed, because that's what the Word of God says. So don't be caught up in false humility, and by the same token, don't be caught up in pride and get ego and just think, mm, you know, I'm really good or something like that. <clears throat> because remember, at all times, God is sovereign. But God has taught us so much through doctors, uh, and we've had so many doctors of all different kinds, orthodontists and uh, orthopedic specialists and and uh, baby doctors, pediatri pediatricians and and uh foot doctors, will you name it? We've had all of them, I think, at our heating explosions. And they have also willingly shared with us out of their great knowledge. Because once a doctor discovers that he can also heal supernaturally, it does a tremendous thing for him and for his practice. One of the doctors who comes to all of our heating explosions is Dr. Mary Ruth Swope, who is not a doctor in the sense that a lot of people are. But I tell you, this woman has great wisdom. And God has given her a great ministry with people who are overweight. And I want to share a little bit of what she shared uh, in that book, Handbook for Healing, uh, on the apostat, because there are so many people in America, especially, who are overweight, and I think it's just because we eat too much, and we eat probably too much of the wrong food. <clears throat> and God spoke to her, and he said, I want you to lay hands on people's apostat, which is a gland in the center of the hypothalamus gland, which is right in the back of your head, uh, and uh, at, right at the base of your, or right at the, uh, at the bottom of the skull. And this is what God told her to do, and I think it's very, very interesting, because this same thing is something that you can do as well. He said, I want you to place one hand on their forehead, and that's so that they will have godly wisdom when it comes time to know what to eat and how much to eat. So place one hand on their forehead for godly wisdom, place the other hand on the back of their head, right at the base of the skull, now not at the base of the, uh, of the skull, of those top three, uh, the, the brain stem, but right at the base of your skull, which is right here. And then say, in Jesus' name, I command that apostat to be healed at the highest level so that you will eat, and then just ask God to give you the percentage that they should eat. Uh, if it's an exceptionally fat person, God will often say to me, 
that they will eat 75% of what they're eating now without being hungry because their epistat is being healed. And the epistat is just like a thermostat. If it gets out of control, then it makes things too hot. If your epistat gets out of control, then it makes you eat too much. So then I pray that maybe they will eat 75% of what they're eating now without being hungry because that's very vital to a person that they not be hungry until they have lost the desired weight. And I usually ask God to put the figure in my mind that they need to lose. And you know, it's amazing how often I will hit it right on the head exactly what has been in their heart to lose. And the thing that I think is so exciting is so many people have written to me after hitting explosions and said, after you laid hands on me, or Dr. Mary Ruth Swope laid hands on me, or one of the healing teams, after she has anointed them to take this uh, message and to take it around the world, that your appetite, your appetite can be healed too. They'll say to me, I've lost 60 pounds or something like that. So remember, one hand on the forehead, the other one on the base of the skull, as you command that apostat to go back into line again. Now, also in the back of that, and, and, and I tell you, if some of us would just really begin to understand the dangers of eating sugar, I hope you'll all love the little thing in there. God's answer is honey, and the Satan's counterfeit is sugar. But you know, as you prepare yourself to really go out and to begin to minister healing to the sick, and this is one of those things that every once in a while you have to prod yourself and make yourself get out there and do it the first time. But beloved, once you start being obedient to Jesus and you begin to lay hands on the sick, there is something that happens to you and you will never want to stop because wherever Charles and I go, we lay hands on the sick. We had a real exciting time the other uh, day. We were in a small hotel. Well, I wouldn't say too small, but a, a fair size hotel, not a monstrous hotel. And the owner of the hotel in uh, Guatemala asked us if we would lay hands upon all of his employees. So we got them in there. We shared for a few minutes about what God is doing today on healing. And then we very sneakily led them all into a sinner's prayer. Wasn't that terrible? Now, wasn't that wonderful? Because they all accepted Jesus as their Savior and Lord. And then one by one, we laid hands on them. And do you know we had the opportunity of seeing every single person there healed? I never saw people get healed so easy in my entire life. But the pain, they had their bodies disappeared. So after that, anytime we went through a hall in the hotel, anybody that wasn't working at that particular hour, but who came on at a later session, would come up to us and say, would you lay hands on me? Would you lay hands on me? Or actually what they're saying, well, praise the Lord, I can understand enough Spanish that I understand when they would say, podre los, los manos. And I would understand that they wanted us to lay their hands on them. But you know, there are opportunities out there wherever you go. And I believe God wants each and every one of us because that's what Jesus so specifically said in his word, that every believer would lay hands on the sick. And so in here, I'm going to review just very, very slightly some of the things I wrote in the chapter, Don't Forget, because it's so vital when you're ministering that you remember a few things. Number one, always ask them what their problem is. It's not important to know all the medical details, but the more you know about it, the easier it will be for you to get them healed. As a matter of fact, very recently, a very prominent man said to me, I never realized how important it was to zero in on the actual problem. He said, I've always just laid hands on people and they never got well. But he said, since you've taught me to be specific and to find out what their problems are, he said, I'm really seeing some incredible things. And so will you. Now remember, and you know we've taught you this before, but th these are just little reminders that I want to go over with you in person because I think it will help you tremendously. Regardless of what, what they tell you it is, say that's easy, say that's easy. Because it is easy for God. Maybe you think it wouldn't be easy for you, which it wouldn't be if you did it on your own. But if you do it in the power of the God's Holy Spirit, you do it in the name of Jesus, it will be easy. I think as much as anything else, when you say that's easy, it makes the person relax that you're about to lay hands on because they think, you've got to be kidding. I've been suffering for the, with this for years. How can it possibly be easy? So be sure to remember to tell them it's easy. Now, once you have ministered healing, have them put their faith into action. This is so vital and this is so critical that you to have them put their faith into action. Remember Jesus and the man with the withered hand? When was the man healed? I want you to think about that. Was he healed when Jesus spoke the word? Was he healed when Jesus approached, or was he healed when he obeyed Jesus? 
I believe it was when he obeyed Jesus. He probably had a stroke or something like that because he had a withered hand. And so he said that he told him, stretch forth your hand. And as the man stretched forth his hand, that is when he was healed. You know, I want to tell you something else about uh, a man that was very similar to that, came to a, a meeting where Charles and I were ministering, and he had terrible bursitis in his shoulder. And this, by the way, was being videoed, uh, or I shouldn't say videoed, it was on satellite. So I laid hands on the man for, for bursitis in the shoulder, and I command the spirit to come out in the name of Jesus. And I said, now swing your arm. I'm telling you to put his faith into action. So he went, ow. Well, you know, that's not very good on satellite. He said, it still hurts. Well, I tell you, that really gets me aggravated at the devil. So I laid hands on him again, and I said, in Jesus' name, I said, I command that foul spirit of bursitis to come out. I said, now move your arm. So he goes, oh, and he makes this terrible face. So I thought to myself, devil, you can't say this. So once again, I said, now, devil, I bind you, and you listen to me. I said, you foul devil bursitis. You come out of there in Jesus' name. Once again, I had the man put his faith into action. Now, you see, I could have quit before that. I could have said, go on your way rejoicing, by faith, claim your heal, or, you know, well, that's, you know, just stand or something like that. But I am persistent, and I want you to per be persistent. And I continued to have him put his faith into action. The third time I said, now swing your arm, he went, it doesn't hurt at all. And he was totally and completely healed by the power of God. So there's two points I brought out there. Have them put their faith into action and be persistent. Don't you dare give up. And another thing that is so vital, beloved, and so many people forget this, there is a way to receive a healing and there is a way not to receive a healing. And so you, as the one who lays hands on the sick, are going to have to encourage the people that you lay hands on to say, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Jesus. You know what that means? It means I got it. I receive it. Oh, I got my healing right now. Have them say it before they ever test their body. Because the, remember this, when they say the name of Jesus, they are using that same name that you're using. So you see, when they say, thank you, Jesus, they are once again applying the name of Jesus to themselves. You can never use that name too often. Jesus didn't restrict us in the use of that name, and so we can use it often. So, often. so be sure that they say, thank you, Jesus, because giving thanksgiving to God is one of the most vital things that is necessary to receive a healing. Now, I want to share something else with you, because I know at this point in your life, and my life, and Charles' life. Not everybody that we lay hands on gets healed. I wish they did, and the day is coming when they will, because Jesus said they would. But at this point in time, we have not yet reached that point where everybody in every service is healed. Now, you can do one of two things. You can look at the ones who are not healed, and you will get discouraged, and you'll give up laying hands on the sick. Or you can look at the ones who are healed. Do you notice that Charles and I always tell you about our victories? We don't tell you about our defeats. But we're that way in every area of our life. We always talk about the victory. We don't look at these down here that didn't get healed. We looked at the ones who do. Because if you look at the ones who do, you will constantly discover that more and more and more are getting healed. If you look the other way, you look at the ones who don't get healed, your faith will go down and down and down and down. So always look at the ones who get healed. Have them look for the healing. In other words, if somebody says it still hurts, say how much of the pain is gone. Now, did you notice the way I stated that? I didn't say how much of it's still there. I said how much is gone. If they say 5%, then give thanks for, for the 5%. Don't complain about the 95% that's left, because the minute you say, thank you, Jesus, for that 5% that's gone, you'll get 10%. And then you say, thank you for the 10%, you get 20%. It's amazing how it works, but it does work. So we need to look for the absence of pain and not the pain. Now, I also want to remind you of something else that's so critical. You are not a doctor. So don't try to act like one. You cannot prescribe medicine, nor can you tell people to come off of medicine. 
leave that up to their doctor. But remember this, encourage them to go back to their doctor so that they will get confirmation from a doctor. Don't make a diagnosis either. Don't tell somebody what's wrong with them. Say it appears possibly or something like this, but ask the person what their problem is. Now, whenever you cast out a spirit, do it in the name of Jesus and by the power of God's Holy Spirit. There are two things that you need to remember and to get into your spirit. Two things are needed for healing, the name of Jesus and the power of God's Holy Spirit. And I wouldn't suggest that you try healing any other way because it just plain doesn't work. And do this, if you try one thing, suppose somebody has a pain in the neck, you do the neck thing and it doesn't work, do the arm thing next. If that doesn't work, they still got pain in the neck, do the pelvic thing. There's a lot of cross relation in your spine. If that doesn't work, do the leg thing, and you might be discovered, I mean, you might be surprised to discover that after you did all four, they were healed. Maybe it was the final thing that you did, the leg thing that healed the neck. But remember this, be persistent and keep on trying because you never know what happens. Another thing I do want to encourage you, don't be half-hearted about healing. I mean, go at it full strength. When in doubt, cast it out. When in doubt, grow it out. That's what Charles and I say all the time. You can't hurt anybody by growing out their leg or growing out their arm or doing the whole TTT on them. So just remember, when in doubt, grow it out. When in doubt, cast it out. And after you've ministered healing, you know what you might want to do is if you're not really totally satisfied, go through the whole TTT thing again because you may discover that somewhere along the line that little final thing just triggers it. Now also, I do want to remind you of this. Be sure when you're ministering healing that you always have somebody standing behind the person you're laying hands on. So if they fall under the power of God, they will get caught. Now I know if they fall in the spirit, they can hit a concrete slab and it'll never hurt them. But a lot of people fall under their own power. And so that's why we always tell you to be cautious on that. If you don't have a catcher, hold them up yourself. Now also, remember to walk in boldness. Don't let the devil make you timid and, and don't let fear stop you because fear is one of those things that really gets a hold of people. They come up to somebody and think, oh, I couldn't possibly do this. Be bold, be strong, be courageous in the Lord and know that he is with you wherever you go. Um, one of the things that I want to remind you also is that there is a force field of power that surrounds every believer. It seems like in some people it goes out a little further than it does another, but it doesn't really make any difference. There is that power of God that emanates out of you. So when you're ministering to a person, stand close enough to them to still be decently and in order, but close enough that the power of God can flow out of you into them. Now, concentrate on one of their problems at a time, because you'll discover there'll be people that come up, they'll have 15 different problems. Do one at a time and take time, if you can, to minister to every uh, need in their life. And then uh, check and see what the progress is on one before you start another one. Now, let me also tell you this. Healing the sick takes practice. And the more you practice, the more successful that you're going to have. So I want to continue. I want you to continue regardless of what the results are. I remember years ago, I said, if I laid hands on 500 people and they all died, I'd get me 500 more patients. You need to feel exactly the same way. Don't give up and don't get discouraged. Don't let people lose their healing through doubt and unbelief because that's such an easy thing to do. And don't sit on the back burner waiting for God to call you. That's what so many people do. I'm sitting on the back burner. God's got me out in the wilderness. No, you put yourself out there because God wants you to be active all the time. Even when you're waiting for the ministry that God has called you to do, remember to continue to be active. Now, you know, when Jesus was ministering on the earth, he didn't pray long prayers and he didn't work up emotion. He just spoke the word, laid his hands on them, and they got healed. And that's what you need to do, too. And at time, the question comes up, can you heal somebody who has doubt and unbelief? Yes. You, you hear us tell over and over again about the people that do get healed. Don't forget, though, to use wisdom and good common sense. In other words, don't be a flake. 
And when you minister to someone who has an open cut or discharge or something like that, get your hands off of them. I mean, don't lay it right on the open sores. And when you're ministering to someone, remember to find out if they're saved. But now I want to tell you something else. If after you've done all, you've been bold, you've done everything you know how to do, then having done all, do as Paul said, stand and believe God. Now I want you to watch some miracles that were taken from actual services. You know, you hear us talk about them and you say, but I'd like to see them when they really happen. Well, take a look at this and see what you think. You'll love it. And it can happen to you and through you in the name of Jesus. And if Charles and Francis can do what you're seeing, you can do it too. Go do it in the name of the Lord of hosts. Hallelujah. Amen, amen, amen. Well, come on, get ready to get out of that wheelchair. Hold that for me just a minute, would you? All right. Devil, I bind you right now by the Spirit of God. I curse the seed and the root of this cancer in the name of Jesus. I command every cancer cell in this body to die in the name of Jesus. I command the killer cells in your body to multiply and attack those cancer cells. Now, silver and gold have I none, but such as I have. I give unto thee in the name of Jesus. Rise up and walk. Heal by the power of God. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. I give you the praise. I give you the praise. I give you the glory, Father. I give you the praise. I give you the glory. I give you the praise. I give you the glory, Father, in Jesus' name. Call him up. I'll give you my telephone number. He's alive and well because God, the name of Jesus, is above the name of brain tumor. You believe that, sweetheart? All right, let me lay my hand on that stinking tumor. Now, devil, I bind you right now by the Spirit of God. In Jesus' name, you foul spirit that's caused this brain tumor, I command you to come out in the name of Jesus. I curse the seed and the root of it. I command every cancer cell in this body to die in Jesus' name. Now, honey, silver and gold have I none, but such as I have, I give unto thee. And that's the healing power of God. Rise up and walk in the name of Jesus. Rise up and walk in the name of Jesus. Rise up and walk in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Get that foot out there. Get the hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Say thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise you, Jesus. <laughs> Hold on my arm like this. Hallelujah. Every step makes you stronger. Every step makes you stronger. In the, you get ready to get up too. Hallelujah. In the name, keep saying, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Father, we give you the praise. Get ready to get up. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. Father, we give you the praise. We give you, that's all the further I can go. That's all the longer the cord goes. All right, take her out there. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Honey, silver, and gold have I none, but such as I have, I give to you. So in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk whole and heal by the power of God. Stand up and walk in Jesus' name. <laughs> in the name of Jesus, glory to God, hallelujah. Give him the praise, give him the praise, give him the praise in Jesus' name. In the name of Jesus, hallelujah, hallelujah. Glory, glory, glory. You ready? Are you ready? I tell you, this little one's got a mask on. I tell you, I just think we ought to get all these people up first. Where have you got the cancer? You've got it in your bone marrow. How many of you believe? How many of you believe that God, you were the one that was a cheerleader last year? This girl was a cheerleader last year. Homecoming queen where? 
at Denison. And look what the devil has done. Put her in, in oh, I hate the devil. How many of you hate the devil? Ah, uh, you hate him too? You love Jesus though, honey. It just sticks all over you. you you're getting ready to kick those things aside down there? Who's this? That's your daddy. Okay, daddy, come around on this side too, okay? Well, that's all right. You're going to walk good tonight. You're going to run and give him a cheer, okay? All right, now, devil. Oh, devil, I bind you. Right now, by the Spirit of God, in Jesus' name, you foul, stinking devil of cancer that has attacked her. Leukemia, right? No bone marrow. I command you to come out of her in the name of Jesus. I command the marrow of your bones to begin to manufacture good red blood. I command every one of those lymph glands to become absolutely whole again in Jesus' name. Now, honey, silver and gold have I none, but this is resurrection power. Where's Charles? Oh, he's down there putting, he's putting the power in her feet. I tell you, I always like to give him a double dose. Now, you, <laughs> honey, silver, no gold, of I none. I want you to rise up out of that bed. I'm sending the healing power of God through you. I want you to get up and give us a cheer for Denison, okay? All right, come on. Hallelujah. Father, I give you the praise. I give you the glory. <laughs> I give you the praise. Honey, I give you the glory in the name of Jesus. <laughs> Hallelujah. Glory, glory, glory. Hallelujah. <laughs> Father, I give you the praise. I give you the glory in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Charles, bring her back. Mike, come here. Come over here. I tell you, I want her to give a cheer for Dennis. Don't sit there. Just get up. Get, just get up, okay? I want her to give a cheer for Jesus. That's right. Jesus instead of Den Dennis. And okay? Way to go, Jesus. I have um, normal on this side, and when I gave birth to my son, this side, you, you, there's a big gap. It just went like that. That's your rib? I guess. Isn't the rib up here somewhere? I'm going to Dr. Leroy, come in. This is Dr. Roy Leroy. He's been to every one of our healing explosions. He's on all of our doctor's panels helping us to learn how to heal the sick. And let him try to feed. Now, he can't give a medical examination. He's not doing that. But chiropractors and other fields of medicine, they know what to do. In fact, they know right where to punch you to make it hurt, don't they? Well, they know how to find these things, so uh, let's just see what what you say. It seems to be like an, uh, an inherited problem that she has here. She's getting healed right now. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. I only have one top problem, Dr. Leroy. When he's examining to tell her what it is, he goes ahead and heals and cheats us from that privilege. <laughs> Hallelujah. What happened? It's already moving up. It's, it's doing what? I can't find the gap anymore. There was a <laughs> oh. <laughs> Hallelujah. Give it for Jesus. Praise you, Lord Jesus. Our accident, he had some ribs crushed. Uh, crushed? How can we put crushed ribs back into place? Yeah. <laughs> you don't care, do you? You don't care how he does it. I don't have a shoulder blade on the right side. He doesn't have a shoulder blade. What effect does that have on your arm moving? Uh, they, I lost 70%. Uh, In other words, let me see you move your arm uh, as much as you can. Up that way. That's as far as you can go? Mm-hmm. Okay. And it's a shoulder uh, shoulder blade back here that you like? Have, you don't have any there. Oh, I don't no have shoulder. a shoulder blade. You want one? Yes, sir. Okay, holiday. You know, they're free tonight. While we're at it, can I go ahead and have my hip back? <laughs> sure. What happened to your hip? I was blown up in Vietnam, and I got an artificial hip. You heard that letter Francis read? You want a new one? Mm-hmm. You got any metal in there? Steel ball joint and plastic cup. Steel ball, uh, ball joint and plastic. Ready? Three discs are ruptured, bone on bone. In that lower back or where? Lower back. Okay. S5 joint. Yeah. S5 joint. 
This, this is cervical is up here. These are the dorsal vertebrae, and these are the lumbar vertebrae. Is, that, is that L5? L5 is yeah. the bottom one. It's S. Is it S5 or L5? L5. 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 Yeah. L means uh, lumbar. <laughs> it's down in here. Is that where it is? Okay. Mm -hmm. See that affects your. Three of them uh, ruptured, you say? Yes, sir. Three ruptured discs. My wife was healed Thursday night, so I know God can hear. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. And you had to wait two more days. Okay, here we go. It's my time. It's your time now, okay. So now, are you ready? Let's see, what shall we heal first? Let's, uh, let's, get, this lower, let's get this lower back. Let's get this lower back. Start on the bottom. Start on the bottom. All right, he says start on the bottom. Bring, bring me a chair here. Now, in the name of Jesus, I take authority over that hip. I command a creative miracle. I command new hip bone, a whole new hip socket. I command all that metal and the plastic to come out, and a new one go in, in place with all the blood, all the normal fluid, in the name of Jesus, be healed. Now, I command that lower back to be restored. I command three new discs. All you ruptured discs, you be made new now in the name of Jesus. I command all the torn ligaments and muscles in and nerves and tendons, you be healed, go back into place in the name of Jesus. Now stand up. Now in Jesus' name, I command that uh, sacrum to go into position, be healed. I command any crushing in that uh, hip, in the hip joint or in the pelvic area, you be healed, go into place, be released in the name of Jesus. Now, by the power of the Holy Ghost, I command these, uh, relax your neck and just follow my hand. I command these upper vertebrae to be restored, the disc to be restored, go into place, release all the nerves down into these arms, in Jesus' name, by the power of the Holy Ghost, relax your neck. Now, in the name of Jesus, I call into being that which is not. I call into being a new shoulder blade, in the name of Jesus, now. Now, try your parts of your body and see what happened to the pain. Thank you, Jesus. Give him a good look. Put it up all the way up there. He's reaching it from the back here, Charlie. Yeah. <laughs> Could you reach that way before? Uh, uh, now, if I want to wash my back, my wife did. Now, you can do it. You can wash her back. Jesus said, wash my feet. Now, he's going to wash his own back. Okay. Good. Try that arm. Anything you want to do. It's normal. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> yeah. Okay. okay, let's do the hip. Thank you, Jesus. Do something. Where did where'd his chair go? He, he untested it out. See, when uh, the Romans 4th chapter, when he said, you, everybody say, me. me. When you call into being, things would be not as though they were. Uh, <laughs> what happened? He hadn't been able to do that since 1968. 1968, he hasn't been able to do that. Thank you, Jesus. Give Jesus a praise offering. Hallelujah. Look at that. He's crossing his legs now. <laughs> There's not a plastic hip around that can do that. <laughs> There's not a plastic... Listen to this. There is not a plastic hip anywhere in the United States that can do this. Thank you, Jesus. Let's see you run down to that man in red down and back. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. <laughs> he found out something else about him. Thank you, Come here. Come to the microphone. My wife can vouch for this. Well, I, come here, wife. I can't go uphill. Okay. <laughs> he can't go uphill. Come up here, wife. Let him chase you. <laughs> let's see. Let's see. You run uphill. You were healed. What were you healed off Thursday night? My back. What was wrong with it? I had arthritis in it. And it's just gone? Mm -hmm. No arthritis since Thursday? No. Well, why didn't you heal it? <laughs> see? You can. Well, he breathed. See, that's good. Now, let's see who can run the faces up the top of this hill. <laughs> that all right? It don't, it, I don't limp. He doesn't even limp anymore. Now, then, you check him out. Look at that. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. Praise the Lord. Isn't that fantastic? That's the artificial one. That's the artificial one. Look at that. Been able to do that. He's never been able to do that. 180 pounds. 180 pounds on one used to be plastic knee. Look at that. Hallelujah. Is that all right? <laughs> yes, sir. Thank, thank you. Give Jesus the biggest praise you can. Glory to Jesus. Praise you, Jesus.